Hello, welcome back to Mark's house and garden. I've just put the finishing touches to these garden obelisks, which are actually made out of a pallet. But I've got something exciting to show you down at the wildlife pond, which is behind me. I'll put a link to the obelisk video in the description box below this video, just in case you're interested in it. And so here we are down by my wildlife pond. And I designed and built this pond specifically to try and attract newts into my garden. And it's been a great success as you are about to find out. Now this pond is six meters across and nearly a meter deep in the middle. It's in the far remotest corner of my garden. There's a log pile over there, buddleia butterfly bushes, mature hedges. So this is a perfect location for a wildlife pond. There's a gradual slope here for any wildlife to climb out should it inadvertently fall in. And there's a variety of different pond plants in there too. Now, before we get started on the newts, let me show you this. It's like a little GoPro camera. It's not a GoPro because I can't run to a GoPro. GoPros are about 400 quid. This was 25 quid, but it came with a waterproof camera. So you pop that in there, you clamp it shut and that can go underneath the water and so last night at about 10 o'clock i came out here into the garden with this camera on the end of a pole and a torch i got some footage of the great crested newts which for now two years have moved into this pond for the springtime and successfully bred so i'm about to show you that footage now and share some facts and figures about the great crested newt all filmed on this little 25 pound GoPro style camera. Enjoy. So let's talk about the great crested newt, shall we? Now the great crested newt is also known as the warty newt and you'll see why when you look at its skin in these video clips. Great crested newts are now a protected species in Europe and the UK and it is an offense to willfully harm or kill or trade in them. It's also an offense to disturb handle, possess or collect them, or to disturb their habitat except under license. Which is why I am observing them from a distance and only for a few moments. I don't want to disturb these newts. Although widespread populations are declining and this is largely due to a loss of habitat. Approximately 50% of farm ponds have disappeared over the last 10 years alone. Open areas of pond water are used for the elaborate courtship dance of the great crested newt. And an adult great crested newt can grow up to 17 centimetres, which means they do prefer larger, well-established ponds. But they will move into a garden pond if the conditions are right, and you can see that here in my wildlife pond. They have a very delicate, lumpy skin, so you should avoid picking them up. Indeed, it may be an offence to do so, although there are circumstances where it is okay to handle a newt for its own safety. They secrete mild toxins through their skin, which is a defence mechanism. I'd ideally, avoid introducing fish to ponds where it is known that great crested newts breed. The fish can eat the eggs and baby newts, which are known as EFTs. E -F -T -S. It's not unusual for newts to live into their 30s and possibly even 40s. By late September, great crested newts are looking for nice sheltered places to hibernate for the winter, including tree roots, burrows and log or rubble piles. And if you have great crested newts in your garden, then you can help them by providing some undisturbed hibernation places for them. Newts face predation from a variety of animals, including birds like herons and buzzards, snakes, mammals like foxes and hedgehogs, and even fish and certain insects. Do newts eat slugs? Well, yes, particularly when on land, they eat slugs along with other insects, worms and caterpillars. Newts are amphibians. They breed in ponds during the spring and spend most of the rest of the year feeding on invertebrates in woodland, hedgerows, marshes and tussocky grasslands. They hibernate underground among tree roots 
and in old walls, which is why I've created a hibernaculum next to my wildlife pond. Now, male newts caught the females with a ritualized display. And after fertilization, a female lays around 200 eggs, folding them into water plants. The larvae develop for about two to four months before metamorphizing in terrestrial juveniles, which are also known as EFTS, E-F-T-S. And both larvae and land-dwelling newts mainly feed on different invertebrates. So there we go, some interesting facts about the great crested newts. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you soon with some more newt adventures. Bye for now.